The Alta Car and Engineering Company was a British sports and racing car manufacturer, commonly known simply as Alta. Their cars contested five FIA World Championship races between 1950 and 1952, as well as Grand Prix events prior to this. They also supplied engines to a small number of other constructors, most notably the Connaught and HWM teams. Topic. Early history The company was founded by engineer Geoffrey Taylor in Surbiton, Surrey, and produced its first automobile in 1929. Alta's first vehicle was a sports car powered by a 1.1L engine, featuring an aluminium block, wet liners, and shaft-driven twin overhead camshafts, which Taylor designed himself. It was offered in naturally aspirated or supercharged form giving 49 or 76 bhp 37 or 57 kilowatts, 50 or 77 ps. A choice of four-speed non-synchromesh or pre-selector gearboxes was available. These were mounted on a low-slung chassis frame with open two or four seat bodies. Thirteen were made, of which five are thought to survive. This design, and its later 1.5L and 2L sister cars, sold steadily, but in limited numbers, right up to the outbreak of war in 1939. With the highest power option the car was capable of 120 miles per hour 190 kilometers per hour and 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7 seconds. In 1937 the company introduced front independent suspension to the chassis. They became popular among club racers due to their ability to be converted easily from 1.5L to 2L or vice versa, allowing drivers on a limited budget to contest more than one class without having to buy a second car. In 1934, Taylor produced the first Alta to be designed solely for competition. The resulting lightweight, offset single-seat Voitourette cars achieved quite a reputation in shorter events such as hill climbs, sprints, and time trials. Once again, Alta's keen pricing, in comparison to the expensive era models, resulted in many sales to amateur racers. However, a lack of reliability kept the Alta name out of the long-distance Grand Prix events. A revised Voitourette design appeared in 1937, with independent front suspension. Georgia Beccasis had some success with this design, winning a string of events before the Second World War interrupted. As war approached, Taylor was drafting designs for a new straight eight engine and a third generation Voitourette, this time with fully independent suspension. This last pre war car was highly advanced for its time, and was very nearly complete in late 1939. However, as soon as war was declared, Alta's production capabilities were given over to the war effort, and production of the new designs was halted. Topic: Post-war. Topic: <inaudible> Alter GP. Despite Alter's diminutive size and the status as a primarily road car manufacturer, Alter was in fact the first British constructor to produce a new Grand Prix car following the end of World War II. Austerity limitations of raw materials did not stop Taylor beginning production of designs he had been developing throughout the war years, and the Alter GP car appeared in 1948. He also restarted production of the road-going sports cars, although without further development funding the popularity of these models rapidly dwindled. Prior to 1948, the last pre-war Alta was campaigned with varying degrees of success. The Alta GP car was a development of the pre-war design, but was powered by a supercharged 1.5L engine, developing approximately 230 bhp, and retained the four-speed pre-selector gearbox of the pre-war cars. Taylor developed the independent suspension design further, introducing wishbones and rubber linkage bushings. The first car was supplied to privateer driver George Abekasis, who campaigned it throughout 1948 and into 1949, but only finished once. Abekasis would go on to use Alta engines to power his HWM team from 1951 to 1955. Modifications were made to the bodywork and gear change for the subsequent 1949 and 1950 GP2 and GP3 vehicles, GP3 also gaining a two-stage supercharger. 
Once again they were built to order, and supplied to Jeffrey Crossley and Joe Kelly respectively. Crossley took GP2 to the 1949 Belgian Grand Prix, but could only manage seventh place. In 1950 he set a number of speed records over 50 miles, 50 km and 100 km at the Montlhery circuit. Kelly concentrated mostly on Irish races, and his best finish was third in the 1952 Ulster Trophy. Both drivers took their respective chassis to the 1950 British Grand Prix, the first ever Formula One World Championship race. However, while Kelly finished, he was unclassified, Crossley retired with a transmission fault. Kelly later carried out extensive modification and rebuilding work on GP3, running it as the Irish Racing Automobiles car during 1952 and 1953. His most significant change was to replace the Alter engine with a Bristol unit. Alter F2 Lacking the funding necessary to develop a Formula One successor to the GP design, Taylor decided to move into the Junior Formula Two category. The engine produced was a 1,970cc inline four-cylinder, naturally aspirated unit, developing around 130 bhp 97 kilowatts, 132 PS. Unfortunately, Alter's own chassis design followed the preceding GP car very closely, and this resulted in an overweight car considering the greatly reduced power available from the unsupercharged motors. Tony Gaze and Gordon Watson took F2 over 1 and F2 halves on a tour of European races, but good results were hard to come by. Indeed, the F2 chassis was so much like the GP design that the uncompleted GP4 machine was converted and became F2 thirds, according to Dennis Jenkinson's book Historic Racing Cars. F2 thirds was no more successful than its siblings. F2 quarters followed in construction and was sold to Orlando Simpson before Peter Whitehead placed an order for what was to become the last Alter car built, F2 fifths. This F2 Alter was entered for World Championship Grand Prix events, first driven by himself in the 1952 French Grand Prix, and then by his half-brother Graham Whitehead at the 1952 British Grand Prix. Neither run produced a points finish, but this was not to be the last time that the Alter name appeared in Formula One. Topic. Alter the engine supplier While the F2 engine might have been overwhelmed by the chassis bulk, tweaks made by Peter Whitehead to the unit in his car showed that the design had tuning potential. Alter engines had already been used by the HWM team since 1949, and from 1953 many more mechanics would come to know the Taylor-designed power plant. Peter Whitehead led the way by removing the engine from F2 fifths and installing it into a Cooper T24 chassis, which he ran in the 1953 British Grand Prix. Also present at Silverstone that day were no fewer than four alter-powered HWM cars. HWM had, the previous year, scored what was Alter's only significant victory, when Lance Macklin won the 1952 BRDC International Trophy race at Silverstone. Over the next few years 1.5L and 2.5L Alter engines would find their way into many British-built F1 hopefuls, the most successful of which were Connaught and Cooper. Ultimately the engine would prove to be capable of approximately 240 bhp 179 kilowatts, 243 PS. With the collapse of Connaught in 1959, the Alter name disappeared from Formula One for good. Topic. Recent history Jeffrey Taylor died in 1966 at the age of 63. In 1976, his son Michael attempted to revive the Alter name with a Formula Ford car but was not successful. A handful of the pre-war sports and single-seat cars survive, all in private ownership. GP101, which was originally owned by Georgia Beccases, was rebuilt for Phil Scrag as a hill climb car and is still in use. F2 Fifths has been reunited with its original power plant and has participated in a number of historic race meeting in recent years, including the 1999 Goodwood Revival meeting. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Complete Formula 1 World Championship results. Key N B. Prior to 1958, there was no constructors world championship, hence constructors were not awarded points. Topic. See also. List of car manufacturers of the United Kingdom.